up guys welcome back to the next episode in the airbus training series today's episode we are going to get us off the gate and headed out to the runway so if you haven't caught the first episode go ahead and check that one out now you should be up to speed with the airplane fully configured and ready to depart the gate now just before we get ready to push back one thing i like to do here and it's really nice that it's modeled in the in the uh, integration here with the fly-by-wire mod is i want to pick up the most recent atis on the airport because as soon as I push back I'm going to be calling ground control right so I want to make sure I have the most current ATIS so I'm going to come down here I'm going to go select ATIS and we're going to put in our airport that we're at right now which is DFW and we'll go ahead and select departure and I'm going to go ahead and send that off now with this fly by wire mod it's pretty sweet that they got this little A cars modeled here so we got to wait just briefly until we get a company message to come back and then we're going to go ahead and push off the gate so we have our company message here let's go ahead and pull it up so the way we do that, we just go back here, receive messages, ATIS. Here we go, information Sierra, altimeter is 3020. Don't mind them that they're taking off of runway 35. We're still going to go to 17 right. All right, so 30 is 20 set. We want to make sure we set our standby as well. Let's go through a quick little before start checklist. Maintenance log and tail number, we would check that, make sure that it was on board. That's more of a real world thing. Cockpit preparation has been complete. Gear pins and covers, again, that's something that we would check real world. That's complete. Signs, we do want to make sure that our cabin signs are on and auto. Eight ears, we want to make sure that the aircraft is in a nav mode, which it is. Fuel, this is where we would verify our fuel on board with the fuel required for takeoff. We have 16,500 pounds on board. All right, so altimeters are set, EFB checked. We don't really have an EFB in this airplane. Next thing I'm gonna do is make sure our windows, doors, and slides are closed and armed. Right now, I don't know how to trigger them to arm. They will arm as soon as we start pushing back from the gate. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the beacon light up here on our overhead. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some integral lighting as well. We want to make sure our thrust levers are in the idle position, which they are. And we'll go ahead and turn on our transponder. Now, if you're on VATSIM, you may have to run this in a different mode. But at the gate in real life, we would just go ahead and put that into auto mode right now. If you're on VATSIM, I do believe you have to turn that on. And of course, we would have our squat code, whatever that may be. Uh, we're just going to put 2000 in there for now because we don't, we're not working. We're not flying on a network for this tutorial. But that you would make sure you have your squat code in there and you would make sure your transponder was on if you were on the VATSIM network. All right, we're now ready to push back from the gate. We'll go ahead and come up here, call DFW ground. Now, I know there is a pushback. I know there is a pushback add-on here, but I'm just trying to use everything default as I can. That way, if you guys want to get into that uh, third-party stuff for pushback, you can. But the best way to do it here for me, just keep it simple, I'm just going to go ahead and go request pushback. DFW Ground Jet Blue Alpha Alpha Lima 577 requesting pushback. So now the pushback truck is going to hook up to the airplane. Now in real life, they would ask for a brake release upon hooking up to the nose. So in this one, they're just gonna start pushing us back even with the parking brake on. So we're just gonna have to, to keep an eye on that. So what I'll do here is I'll just kind of wait till the airplane just starts to move. Of course, in real life, they would actually confirm that your brakes were set and then they'll confirm brake release. All right, so I feel like he's just hooked up. We'll go ahead and release the brakes. And on brake release, we see that the slides are armed, so our checklist is technically complete at this time. And we're gonna go ahead and push back. Now, you can start engines during the pushback phase. There is nothing wrong with doing that. For this particular pushback, though, I'm just gonna go ahead and start the engines once we have stopped pushing back, so it makes it a little bit easier for me. All right, once I'm significantly far enough back, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the pushback. DFW ground jet blue alpha alpha lima 577 requesting the end of pushback. Jet blue alpha alpha lima 577 request to end pushback received. All right, once the pushback is stopped, I'm gonna go ahead and set the parking brake. And now we're gonna go ahead and start engines. So there's a lot of talk about which engine do you start first, which engine, you know, how do you, 
which order do you start engines? A lot of guys like to start engine number two first. That's a European thing. It's a Boeing thing for the most part. But in the United States, we start engine one first on the Airbus. And the there's a couple of different reasons for that. So if we take a look, quick look at our hydraulics layout over here on the overhead, we can see that our green system is powered by an engine driven pump. We can see our yellow system is powered by an engine driven pump. Blue hydraulics are driven solely by electrical power. Now, the reason we start engine one first in the Airbus is because the green hydraulic system provides normal braking to the aircraft. We have normal braking and alternate braking available. During a taxi out, probably the most important thing that you're going to have available is your brakes. You want to be able to stop the airplane should you need to. So, starting engine one first, green system is powered by the engine driven pump, we will have normal braking. Now, the yellow system powers our nose wheel steering. Also, very important to have during taxi out is nose wheel steering. Now we have this little switch right here called the PTU or power transfer unit. This allows us to take pressure from either the yellow system or the green system and pressurize the opposing system. So if I start engine one first and then I run the PTU, I will be able to pressurize the yellow electric system. However, the PTU running in the background makes that infamous sound that you're probably familiar with. That. So if possible, it is ideal to minimize the use of the APU on the ground for passenger comfort. So how can we pressurize the green system and the yellow system without operating the power transfer unit? Well, the yellow system has a yellow electric pump available. We can fully pressurize the yellow hydraulic system and receive a nose wheel steering from the yellow hydraulics via the electric pump without having to run the power transfer unit. Now, if we look at this in reverse order, let's say we want to start engine two first for some reason. If I start engine two first, the only way I'm going to taxi out to my runway on a single engine is going to have normal braking available, so I have to run the PTU. The PTU will automatically turn on and you will hear the PTU cranking the entire taxi out very uncomfortable. So for single engine purposes, it is much preferred to start engine one first and taxi out with the yellow electric pump on because that will silence the PTU. All right, so to recap that, that was a lot of information. The whole discussion and debate about which engine do you start first basically revolves around are you going to single engine taxi or not? It boils down to the fact that if you single engine taxi with the number one engine running, you have redundant systems protecting both your normal brakes and your nose wheel steering available. If you go out on engine number two, single engine, you only have the PTU running to keep your normal brakes working. If the PTU were to fail, you will then go into alternate brakes. Not a huge deal, the airplane will still stop, but you have no redundancy. Reverse that situation if you're taxiing with the number one engine running, you have the engine driven pump providing normal brakes. Should that fail, the PTU will kick on and take pressure from the yellow system that is being pressurized by the electric pump and pressurize the green system and get you your normal brakes back. So it all has to do with redundancy and if you're going to single engine taxi or not. So that's basically going to sum up the debate between single engine taxi, which engine do you start first or not. So it is a very common procedure here in the U.S. Of course, you would obviously follow your company operating procedures and that could vary from airline to airline and country to country. But this is the technical explanation behind the hydraulic systems and what happens when you decide to taxi on one engine versus the other. We are going to do a single engine taxi today. We'll see how this airplane handles this. We'll go ahead and move the engine mode selector to the start position. I can look here on my lower ECAM and I can see that I do have start PSI available for the engine. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the engine master switch to the start position. Alright, coming back up to the front of the airplane here where we would be in real life, you're monitoring the engine start, you're monitoring fuel pressures, you're monitoring temperatures, we can see now that we have a green veil light in the N1 location for the number one engine, that means that engine one is available. 
So at this point, we are going to configure the airplane for single engine taxi. We're going to first start with our after start flow. We'll move the engine mode selector to normal. We're going to arm the speed brake lever and we're going to select our flaps position to position one. With the flaps in the one plus F configuration, we'll then come to the overhead. For the overhead, to configure for a proper single engine taxi, we must pressurize our yellow system and we don't want to use the PTU, so we are going to turn on the yellow hydraulic pump so we have nose wheel steering available without use of the PTU. Now, on the rest of the overhead, we'll go ahead and turn off the APU bleed as we no longer need to run a dual bleed for this taxi out. After that, you are ready to taxi the airplane out. I'm going to go ahead and turn our taxi light to the taxi position. I'll release the parking brake and we can taxi to the runway. All right, as we enter the taxiway, in real life, I like to look down there and see how many airplanes are in line for takeoff. If there's nobody in line or just a few airplanes, we're gonna go ahead and start that second engine. So to start the second engine, we have to configure very similar to how we did when we started the first engine. We'll come up to our overhead, except now we're gonna go ahead and turn off the yellow electric pump. At this point, between now and engine start, the PTU is going to be running and it would be heard in the back by the passengers. We're also going to reactivate the APU bleed for our second engine start. If you do not reactivate the APU bleed for second engine start, you will have to use a cross bleed technique, which we would get into in a further video. With the APU configured, we can now move the ignition start selector to norm, verify that we do have pressure, and we'll go ahead and crank engine number two by moving the number two engine master to start. With the second engine coming to life, again, we are monitoring our upper ECAM, waiting for that green avail light to illuminate on the number two engine. Now with the green avail light in the number two engine, we know that we have a good start on number two and we can go ahead and utilize our second engine for taxi and also reconfigure the airplane for after start. At this point, we're going to do just what we did after we started the first engine, remove this to normal, verify that is armed, our flaps are in the correct position, up to the overhead, we will turn off the APU bleed and at this point, we will go ahead and turn off the APU master switch in preparation for takeoff. Normally in a two crew environment, this is when we would go ahead and begin the taxi checklist or before takeoff checklist. However, since I'm operating single pilot and giving you an instructional video at the same time, I will wait until we are holding short of the runway with the parking brake set in order to do our taxi checklist. All right, now with the aircraft holding short of the runway, we're gonna go ahead and step back and go through that taxi checklist. Now in a two crew environment, again, it's much easier to accomplish and much safer to accomplish with one person taxiing the aircraft and the other going through the taxi checklist. It is actually recommended that you get your taxi checks done before you get to the runway hold short line. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna do it here now short of runway 17 right. So with the parking brake set, the first thing we're going to do after our second engine start is we want to do a flight control check. 
We accomplish this by moving the side stick in a series of directions, verifying that the flight controls respond as accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and pull full back on the stick. I'm going to verify that we have full aft on the elevator. We'll go ahead and push forward, full down, verify that it returns to neutral. Full left, full right, neutral. Now, not like in a Boeing aircraft or a yoke-driven aircraft where you go ahead and mix your flight control signals at the same time. It's actually preferred by Airbus that you do it individually, such as going full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral. You can also see that the roll spoilers there, two, three, four, and five deploy during your aileron checks. Now on the real aircraft with the Florence kit installed, these indicators will actually be here in these little white boxes here, indicating that the ailerons are drooped. However, that system is not necessarily modeled yet in FS 2020. With the flight controls checked, I am now going to come down here and press the takeoff config push button. From the takeoff config push button, I'm going to go ahead and down here and turn my radar on, and I'm going to turn my predictive wind shear system into the auto mode. From there, I'm going to move over to the TCAS panel. I'm going to go ahead and turn the ATC to on. And I'm going to go ahead and move this traffic to all and turn on my TARA selector. After that has been done, I will probably make a PA to the flight attendants, letting them know we are ready for takeoff and to take their seats for departure. With that accomplished, make sure that your auto brakes are set to the max position. With your auto brakes on max for RTO only, we now have a takeoff ECAM that has no blue items. With the takeoff showing all green, we are ready to commence the takeoff. All right, that's going to wrap up this video. In the next video, we will cover the takeoff and climb phase in the Fly-By-Wire A310E. Until next time, guys, I'm V1. Stay safe. See ya.